Ladies and gentlemen, we have this story from Awards Daily, as well as big news from ABC. Am I Racist has cra- cracked the box office top five. The new film from The Daily Wire and Matt Walsh is, in my opinion, I got to say it, masterpiece. It is a masterpiece. I really do think so. And what do I mean by that? It may sound a bit over the top, but let me explain. Am I racist? I've, saw th- I've seen the clips. I thought they were funny. I said, this looks fantastic. It looks like it's going to be great. What is a woman was already fantastic. I went and saw the movie. The audience score on Rotten Tomatoes right now, 99 with 500 plus verify- verified ratings. Verified hot, they say, but there's no critic score. It's a media blackout. The media has a blackout on Am I Racist by Matt Walsh and The Daily Wire. Let me tell you about this film, and then I'll read this for you, and and, and I'll give you a little background first. I hope many of you have seen this. You need to go see it. It's not political. It's a comedy. Matt Walsh doesn't come into this film saying these are grifters. They're racists. They're causing all these problems. He doesn't preach. Masterfully done. The reason why I say it's a masterpiece is one, it's a funny film. It's a comedy movie. It is a straight comedy mockumentary. If you like comedy films, you will like this. It's the best thing I have seen The Daily Wire do. And a lot of people have been critical of Daily Wire's you know, past attempts, but this is where they really figured it out. They're not preaching to you. They're not telling you what you should believe. They're literally just doing comedy. There's a, there's a fight scene where Matt Walsh is fighting. I'm telling you it's a comedy. There's slapstick where Matt Walsh fumbles and he's dropping things. I'm telling you, it is a comedy film. The whole theater was laughing. The reason why I say it's a masterpiece, it accomplishes so much. Despite the media blackout, okay, they clearly don't want to admit that the movie is good. But let me tell you this. If you are someone who's not political and you bring your friends, they will laugh their asses off at the jokes. Excellent and well done. It's well produced. It's got good music. The editing is perfect in the beginning. I have no notes. As a film, I say, I I got nothing else. I'd say it's a great movie. You got to see it. But what it accomplishes, several of the DEI grifters have deactivated their accounts on X, issued statements saying, oh, geez, oh, no. The film exposes the absurdity and hypocrisy of their psychotic positions without insulting them directly. They let these people roast themselves with the absurdity of their own positions. Matt Walsh takes a very comedic Socratic method when he sits down with these DEI grifters One woman saying, like, you got to talk to your kids about being racist. It just as soon as you can. And he's like, there's there's no age that's that's right to start. And she's like, I've got a four year old. And then he goes, I have a six month old baby that I haven't uh, talked to about this. And you should. And he's like, "Okay, I can't believe how good it is in its activism without being overtly activist. This is why I say I uh, it's a masterpiece. This I don't I don't know how they top this. I really don't. I know. Forgive me for being uh, gushing so much over how good this film was. I didn't I didn't even say this much about what is a woman. What is a woman was good. Don't get me wrong. But uh, I'm in a packed theater in D.C. In D.C. of all places, 90 percent Democrat packed theater. Maybe 10 percent of the seats were empty. So I say packed. I mean, you're not going to get a seat that that you like. You're either sitting in the first row or you're sitting in between people split up from your group. And most of the, the, the showings were like this. So we just chose one, got seats really close to the screen and watched. Everybody was laughing the whole time. Everybody was laughing. This is why the media has blacked out the film, because they cannot deny it. And they know it. This I am. I am so excited. I am so this, this makes me optimistic. I got to tell you, makes me optimistic. Critics review zeros, zero. Wait, what? Critics review zero. What is this? Well, hold on. What are these? What are these reviews? There are reviews here. Awards Daily says. I thought it was strange to visit Rotten Tomatoes to find out what the score was for the Daily Wire's Am I Racist? The main page looks like this. You'll note no score for the movie and reviews listed as zero. There are reviews, however, there are five and they're all rated fresh. Matt's movie reviews fresh. Alan Ng, half the audience will laugh. The other half will walk out. <laughs> he gave it a tomato. He gave it an 8.5 out of 10. The first guy, four, 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 four out of five. This one got 3.5. This is a, a Hollywood and Toto. 
3.5 out of 4. I believe Hollywood and Toto is a little bit more sane. Avi Offer says, bold, provocative. I wondered why there wasn't the 100% score for that. A quick Google search brings up this. Certified Rotten Tomato score. It has at least five reviews from top critics, a steady tomato meter score of at least 75, limited re- release films must have at least 40 reviews, wide released films must have at least 80 reviews, TV shows are eligible by season and must have at least 20 reviews per season. So, so it has to be top critics and not mid critics. When you click the movies link, you see this. Look at this. The highest audience score for a film with over 500 verified reviews, 99%. I scrolled to the site to see if any other movies had no numbered score and did. It's called The Greatest of All Time Goat. It has four reviews. But when you click on it, it shows the number where I'm racist does not. Four. Interesting. And they say no reviews. 69 popcorn score. So what gives? Am I Racist came out at number four in the box office chart, which isn't bad. Its per theater average puts it at number three. Obviously, it did well despite a complete and total blackout by the main street press. And despite that, none of the so-called top critics, whatever that means, deigned to review it. Only a small handful did. But that's, the, that's only in print. Over in the real world, a.k.a. YouTube, film critic Jeremy Johns had the balls to review it. He has nearly two million subscribers. Do you think any of the top critics set those kinds of view on their reviews? Do you think maybe the reason for that is that they don't want to review movies like this? Let's let's pull up their movie review. I'm going to be on this week's videos. Call this week. This is uh, Jeremy Johns. He's got 500,000 views. Number 25 on trending for his movie review of Am I Racist? Johns take, takes the opportunity to talk about the stuff because he doesn't exist inside the insular isolated bubble of the left. Certainly where most of the top critics dwell. If it's on harsh, it's because they have failed at their job to review a film they might be able to discuss. They didn't want to platform him. That's why they didn't do it. Maybe they'd lose their jobs. Who knows? But put it this way. I'm not surprised John's is popular on YouTube. His review has over 90,000 views in three hours. As of right now, half a million in two days, 25 trending on YouTube. Look at this. Our good pals at Film Threat also did a live event because they too live in the real world. Chris Gore and Alan Ning uh, talked through it. I'm not saying you have I'm, I'm not saying you have to watch the film, like the film or give it a review, but it is odd that the people over to, who cover Hollywood and Hollywood itself seem to think it can survive on fear and blacklists forever. Bro, no, ain't gonna. Here's another popular YouTuber, Misha Petrov with over 400,000 followers. This video has 184,000 in four days. A parody site called Dark Brandon attempted to get ahead of the movie and make an animated film calling Matt Walsh a racist misogynist. What is this Hi, here? I'm Matt Walsh. And I have an upcoming movie coming out called Am I a Racist? And I'm pretty sure everybody knows the answer. Yes, I'm a racist, misogynistic piece of shit. In my last movie, Am I a Woman? I was really able to display not only misogynistic ideas. Okay, we get the point. Let me tell you why this stuff isn't working. This video may work really well among liberals. This channel is this video's got 10,000 views, I guess. Let me tell you, most people who go and see this film, Am I Racist? They don't know who Matt Walsh is. Matt Walsh is a prominent commentator, pundit, personality. He's very famous. He has 3 million subscribers. He had a smash hit with What Is a Woman? A tremendous cultural endeavor. I, I, I think the Daily Wire's really nailed this with Matt Walsh's latest films. Really, really great stuff. But the average person isn't going to laugh at a video of Matt Walsh being like, yes, I am racist. Because they're going to be like, I don't know who this guy is. It's, it's, for, all, for all you know, if you watch Am I Racist, you're like, it's a comedian. That's it. The film is quite literally, I got to tell you, quite literally, just Matt Walsh being like, I decided to do the work and figure out how to be not racist. And then he goes and meets these people, talks about how much they paid them to do it. It is, it's a perfect film. I got to tell you, there's no point at which I was bored. I found myself sitting there the whole time, just watching through it, laughing the whole time, really interested to see where things were going. They got great characters. They got real people. One of the best scenes is from the the trailer. You can see it where he asks this old biker guy about how he feels about cis heteronormativity, heteronormativity or whatever. And the guy goes, ah, he's like, he's just drinking his beer and he looks at him and goes, ah, it was the perfect reaction to what it is. 
They didn't need to tell you it was stupid. They didn't need Matt Walsh to come out and say these people are nuts. They needed him only to ask the question to a regular person for that person to go, huh? And that exemplifies everything. For this, media blackout. Now, Jeremy Johns receives a backlash for his review, SCNR reports. The Daily Wire's debut theatrical release starring Matt Walsh investigates the world of diversity, equity, and inclusion. Johns, a movie reviewer, covered the Daily Wire's latest release. The YouTuber praised Walsh for his humorous Borat-esque character portrayed in Am I Racist, which was inspired by his character Chris Dilby in the comedy in the Daily Wire's Lady Ballers. The video subsequently faced significant backlash from critics. Matt Walsh says, the left has labeled Jeremy Johns a racist sellout simply for reviewing my film. This is how they play the game. Viciously denounce anyone who positively acknowledges the existence of the film so that other critics will be too afraid to follow suit. Matt Jorbo says, midlife crisis Jeremy Johns is not the villain origin story I was expecting. Oh, really? Matt Jorbo. Horror Alice says, Jeremy Johns has always sucked. It's amazing people valued his opinion at all. Him being a racist and a centrist coward is not surprising in the slightest. Confirmed racists, says one uh, Twitter user. And another says, I can't for the life of me, uh, I can't think for the life of me why Jeremy Johns would shine a light on person like Matt Walsh and give him a shake. Except that Johns got a juicy offer from the Daily Wire in the form of connections or payments or some other transaction. Or it's simple. Am I Racist is a massive film. It was number three at the box office. Uh, It's doing surprisingly well. It is a good and funny film that regular people are watching and enjoying with over 500 verified ratings, giving it a 99% score. Shout out to Justin Folk, the director, Matt Walsh, and uh, everyone involved, and the Daily Wire crew. People seem to really, really love it. Let me tell you, my friends, I have no notes. I always leave a theater, whatever the movie may be, I leave the theater going like, man, they really should have done this. They really should have done that. How about uh, Star Wars, you know? Return of the Revenge of the Sith or whatever. I know it's an oldie, but it's an easy one. I'm just sitting there being like, why did Anakin become evil? It's like he he's he he wants to stop Palpatine, but then just goes, I will do whatever you say. Why? He was going to help win. Could they have not added like one sentence to, you know, like make it work better? I'm always giving notes on films when I walk out like, oh, you know, this, I walked out of that jealous. They nailed it. I was like, I. I have, I have nothing to say. I mean, they could not have done it better. They could not have done it. But that's my review. That's my review. I want to do a spoiler review, but we'll, we'll wait a little bit because y'all need to go see this movie. Awards Daily says the movie is funny. It's not offensive. It's offensive for people whose religion has become anti-racism. And there are a lot of those people. Probably everyone in Hollywood by now. Netflix wouldn't make this. Apple wouldn't make this. Amazon wouldn't make this. No movie studio would. And isn't it time they asked why not? But overall, the job of good documentaries is to ask questions, not answer them. It's not to tell people how to think, yet yet that is what they've become. If they want to capture the attention of Gen Z and every generation thereafter, they will have to thaw out and join the real world. We still don't know how much money the film will make overall, but its success means The Daily Wire is now a legit movie studio. You know, people ragged on Lady Ballers. They said that it was too on the nose. The joke was obvious and the movie was preachy. Some uh, criticized, uh, I believe it's Mr. Burcham, uh, 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 Burcham is their uh, cartoon show, as once again being too on the nose. I've always been a big proponent of taking down your political opponents through mockery by mocking them, but not preaching about it. They could not have done this better. The film, there's no point at which uh, he says, DEI grifters are bad, they're ripping you off. These these corporations are adopting these policies that are pissing people off. That's the commentary side of things. I'll tell you what's going to happen. The next time, and I've already seen this, there was like some viral tweet where a guy said, I can't believe my company actually hired this person thinking that what she was offering was sound advice. It's going to be very difficult for these DEI grifters to continue working after this film. Oh, they're going to be so angry. Many of them already deactivated their accounts. But I imagine this, and this was the goal. They look like morons. And so when a company is told we want to do a diversity initiative and one of these woke cultists says we should bring in, you know, insert DEI grifter, they wouldn't call him that. They'll say this person. They're going to go, okay, and they're going to look at it and go, this person was clowned and, and 
we will be embarrassed if we hire them. If this person walks in and our staff has seen this movie, they're going to start busting out laughing and they're going to complain. My friends, I don't want to spoil the movie, but there's literally a scene where as a DEI grifter, Matt Walsh convinces people to (laughs) self-flagellate. He gives them whips. You got to see it. Uh, I am so jealous of this. I, you know, you know, and I'll tell you this guy, this guy, uh, this stuff too. We're working on a lot of stuff here at, uh, at Timcast. Tons of crazy projects. It's overwhelming at times. And so uh, we've got the skate project with the boonies. The website uh, should be launching today. You can buy boards. There's going to be a private membership and discord server where we're going to be bringing in people in the action sports community. We're going to have member exclusives. You as members are going to be the judges for our contests. We're going to do real time polling. So much awesome stuff. Custom boards and merch. We want to help build that culture and win back skateboarding and reinvigorate not just skateboarding, but other action sports. We're working on all these things. It could be overwhelming. I sat down in that theater and I watched this film. You'll notice, and I'm going to be completely honest. You notice the new thumbnails. We're doing a new thumbnail for Tim Cast IRL as well. I watched this movie and I thought to myself, I have to redouble everything I'm doing. I have to work 100 times harder than I am. I have to start. I, I just, I, that's it. I saw this film and it was so good that it lit a fire under me that has never been before. I already work 12 to 16 hours every single day. The reason I say 12 is because eating food and exercising might not be considered work. And I thought, how can I do more? How can I be as good as this? I am jealous of how good this movie is and this production. We've got some documentaries. We are working on expanding these coffee shops. We are grinding our fingers to the bone, trying as hard as we can. And then I saw this and said, let's be 100 times better. This gives me more hope and optimism for everything we've been working on. And that's why I keep praising it. I cannot express to you how inspired and how good this movie was. I have seen such garbage from the right in terms of comedy. I got to tell you, the new norm, even some of the Daily Wire projects. But I can't tell you how jealous I am of how, how amazing they did with this. It is like the old school days of good comedy done in a modern context that punches up at these elitist snoots who look down on working class people. And I want, I want that. I want to make a movie like that. I want to do that. Daily Wire, you guys rock. This is epic stuff. I, I, I am so jealous of the stuff you're doing. We are going to, we are going to get it done here at Timcast. We're become a member at Timcast.com. Click join us. Let's get it. We got a TV app coming out. We are, we are launching new marketing campaigns, new commercials. We are going to push harder than we've ever done. I am inspired by the stuff the Daily Wires have, uh, have, have been working on. You guys have really uh, lit a fire under me to be even better than I ever. I'm, 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 we're going for it. You know what? I might start working weekends again. You know, because I, I, I take the weekends off. I'm like, 16-hour days are brutal. We got big plans. I, I, we have been hitting people up. We've been going to the staff being like, it's time to grind. Look how good this is. We can do it. Thank you guys so much for watching this and go see that film. Shout out to Matt Walsh. I'm really excited to have you here. I've never been a bigger fan. I'm, I'm, I mean it when I say like this is, you know, I remember being a kid and hearing music and thinking like, I want to make that one day. I have not seen something this good. I, I just so good. People, people are making jokes now saying, you know, I'm shilling too hard. Chilling. I don't care, man. I mean it. I legitimately mean it. I'm, I, this is inspiration for me. We, we got a song coming out in 10 days, Coming Home. Uh, I think you guys will really enjoy it. I hope you do. We are, uh, we, are, we are going to work as hard as we can. Thank you all so much for, uh, for watching. Become a member at TimCast.com. Join the effort. Join our Discord. Uh, BooniesHQ.com should be up today, coming soon. Very simple site, but we got great stuff. We're working on new shows. Let's get it. Next uh, segment will be at 8 p.m. Next show, TimCast IRL. Thank you all so much for hanging out. Smash that like button. Become a member. Follow me on X. And we will see you all tonight at YouTube.com slash TimCast IRL.